Hello and welcome back to Fan Geek Tastic. As you can see in front of the camera here, you can see there's a box that's empty. And I am not going to be doing a box opening today, I'm going to be doing a box filling. I'm going to show how I personally pack cards whenever I'm going to be shipping them. And these cards are going to be going to England. So there's going to be a lot of exchanging hands, a lot of going in between companies, um, between mailing services. So I want to make sure that these cards are not going to get damaged once they get into route. Um, I want the customer to receive the packages or the, the boxes in the pack uh, as much as they are right now as they possibly can be. And I figured out how to ship stuff so that they generally get to the customer in the same condition that I ship them in. And I'm going to show how I personally ship. Now, you can ship them any way that you want. This is how I do it. If this helps you to ship your stuff better, great. I, I do reuse shipping material because if I'm receiving boxes all the time and they're, they have, you know, packing peanuts or they have bubble wrap, it's ridiculous to throw it away because number one, you're adding to the landfill. Number two, it can be reused. So why not reuse it if it's still perfectly good? Now, the first thing that I do is I take my box of cards, however many they are, and I find a box that will fit them properly. And then, before I use any packaging material, I place them in there in a way so that I know that they're going to get the least amount of damage. So what I will end up doing is I will take my box and I will put it in. Now, this box is, is not complete. He was buying all the packs that I had. And because he's buying everything that I have left in that box, which is 28 packs, I'm going to give him the box. Now, some people won't do that, but I don't see any reason why I wouldn't, because he is literally buying a box minus 8 packs. So, I'm going to give him the box. And the other box that he's buying is these giant photo cards. And as you can see, they fit in here fairly tight by themselves. So there's not going to be a whole lot of packaging that's going to go on either end. So what I've done with this one, because there is room in here, I've taken bubble wrap. I've put these stacks on this side over here all the way up to the top. Then I've filled this side with bubble wrap so that the cards will not shake around and get damaged during transport. And then what I will do is I will take my bubble wrap and I will wrap it around the box making sure that I have bubble wrap hanging off the edge like so to protect the ends as they're being shipped. And I will slide that into the box, tuck that in, and as you can see, it is still moving. So I will take more bubble wrap, and I will wrap it up, and I will shove it over here in the corner. And that keeps the box from moving. Next is this one, because it is a little longer, I don't have the room for it to overlap on the ends. So what I do is I will fold this part down so that it double overlaps on one side. Because this side's sturdier than this side, I will use this side for the extra protection. And now that I have that wrapped up, 
I will put that in the box. And there you go. Now, the way that I always check to make sure that I've accomplished my mission is I will pick it up. I will shake it up and down, back and forth, and then left and right. Now, there, there will always be, unless you thoroughly overpack it, there will always be a little bit of play whenever it comes to cards, because the cards themselves will move. Now, I've checked on this one. I packaged it up earlier so I knew exactly how I wanted to do it before I put it on video. The movement that I'm feeling in there right now is from the giant photo cards. There's a little bit of extra room because of the... Uh, the crimped ends so there's not really anything that I can do about that so this is the best that this one's possibly going to get so I will go ahead and set it up and there it is it is now ready to be shipped I'm just going to take it to the post office and I am done. But I also need to ship out some comic books. So I'm going to show you how I make comic book boxes for shipping. Since now I'm doing shipping videos today. Now this box here is the box that I received those BCW comic book boxes from. So I'm going to be using this because it is thick enough to be used for shipping. First thing I want to do is I want to cut this panel off. Alright, so these are the comic books that I'm going to be shipping out. I've cut off that panel that I was talking about earlier. And I have two comic books, Amazing Spider-Man 51 and 60, that I'm going to be shipping out. So what I want to do at this point is I want to mark off where each side of the comic books lay out. Of course, one time I decided to make the video, it wants to go all squirrely on me. Alright, so now I have marked off where I want everything to sit. So, if you go and you measure I uh, have a half an inch that this uh, these top loaders take up. So I am going to go a little bit more than half an inch because I want to put some padding inside. So I'm going to go with three quarters on each side. Except for the bottom and the top. Those, those will get different measurements. Um, one side will get the same measurement. It will be just a tad bit, like uh, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch, depending on how thick your material is. Um, so I'm going to go with an eighth of an inch on the bottom. And the top will get its own once I get finished. There's my mark here. And the corrugation is going this way so it actually gives me really good lines to line everything up with. And the 
bottom is here. There is no corrugation that I can use for lining up, but I did a nice straight line. As long as I keep within that line, then I will be fine. So that gives me this side, this side, and this side with the initial two corrugations. Which means yep. I didn't continue this line all the way. This is going to fold over top here, this is going to fold over top here, this is going to fold up this way, and this is going to fold up this way. So this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner do not need to be here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. Alright, I already did all the scoring, and now I've cut out the, uh, the corners. So now all that's left over is folding. Now, there's two different ways you can do this. You can fold it in on the sides that have the cuts. You can fold it in. I fold it out because I put it inside of a, uh, a waterproof bag. So having the corrugation sticking out is not going to bother it like that. Having the corrugation sticking out is not going to bother it once it's inside that, that bag. So I fold it in so that uh, I get the cleanest bends possible. Oops. And it wants to you know, score this one a little deeper. score this one deep enough either. Right. Now that you got all your your bends going, I'm going to take my comic books, stick it inside, close it up, and that's the final seal there. camera in the way of my bags that I use. Alright, I can use this one. I will take this. And I slide this into the bag. And it's got enough room in there so that if I want to add more packing, bubble wrap, I can. So if it's a really expensive comic book, then I will also wrap it in bubble wrap inside. Close it up and then stick it inside of the bubble wrap bag and minus taping that is ready to go now the look of this is not as good as the ones that you buy that are professionally made and it's not expected to look professionally made this is a way of keeping stuff out of the out of the dump. It's a recycling method. 
that big box that I started off with. Now there's uh, about four pieces that are about half the size of a comic book that will end up being in the trash. And you can actually use those as padding and other shipping. You have uh, another side that you can use to make another box. And then the two smaller sides of it can be used to cut up to put as padding inside of other things that you are shipping. So you can use that whole box to help you with your shipping. Now, as I said, this is not supposed to look pretty. This is supposed to protect what you have that you're shipping out. If you want it to look pretty, I'd recommend buying a professionally made shipping box. If security and your stuff getting to your customer in the condition that you want to ship it, these work perfectly. Now, if you're shipping out more than one and you need multiple boxes and you have several boxes that are the same size, then once you make one, you can always make a template. Makes it a lot quicker. Uh, doing what I just did took me a couple minutes, about five, maybe six minutes to, to do all the cuts, make sure that they were lined up the way that I wanted them to, so that they would fold correctly. <laughs> now, the, if you use it as a template, then all you have to do is cut out the, the four corners, and then you score the lines that you need, and you are done. There is no more that you have to do. It's going to take you like a minute to do another box, maybe two. So, you know, if you make one and you have plenty of boxes, like I, I will use sometimes the, the USPS shipping boxes to make these because some of them are big enough so that uh, you, can, you can do it without wasting really any of the box other than a couple of little corners. Thank you for joining me today as I go over how I do my shipping. If you'd like any more information, just let me know. For everything you're a fan of, everything you geek out about, this is Fan Geek Tastic, and we're here for you.